Hey, what's going on, family? Welcome to the Inspired by Christ podcast. This is part two, part two, part two. Thank you guys for watching part one. This is part two. Again, if you were excited about that one, we're going to continue this conversation. Wanted to make sure that everybody got all the inspiration that they needed from Aya. And again, if you haven't caught part one, go back and watch part one because this one is going to be better. So we got Aya Milagros. We're kicking it off part two. Um, where we where we stopped off at with part one, we're talking about you going from that process of moving from where you were born and raised, St. Martin, moving to Paris. And you were just talking about that experience where you said in your heart, we're like, you know what? I, I've been to Paris before. I went through the experience and I was there. And, and you told God, like, yeah, I would never go back to Paris. I would never be there ever, ever again. But then it's funny how God takes that place where we think is dead, that it's not nothing there for us. And God places us back in that situation to say, yeah, you thought it was, but I'm taking you back there because I have a better purpose for you. I have more things in store for you. And so it's just beautiful to hear that and just catching the people up to where we were from part one. But then now, what do you feel like from that process of being in Paris before then you go back to your hometown and then now you you're back there now and you're seeing how God is working where he's just giving you all the fruits of your labor and truly right. molding you into what you are like how does that process what does that do for your faith in that process like of doing that full circle moment what did that do for you so here's the thing it's really clarity and and, and I really want those who are listening right now to understand this like God cannot use you in a place unless you're ready, right? So it takes you going through different, maybe di different tribulations, different struggles, different things, right? Yeah. To prepare you now for the will that God has for your life. Correct. And so here's the thing. When I was in Paris the first time, again, I was not in, you know, I wasn't really in Christ. I was, you know, living a very worldly um, life. Mm -hmm. Now I'm coming back. I am a Christian. I'm a devout Christian. Like I'm, I'm in Christ. So it's different now. So yeah. now God can really use me for cool. his glory, use me for whatever plan, you know, he has for my life now, because I am in a position spiritually, yeah. mentally now to actually go ahead and be a vessel and be a tool for the kingdom. Um, you know, while I was preparing, while I was getting ready to, mm -hmm. to come on this call, yes. um, you know, God really laid something on my spirit and, and it was the, the power of struggles, the power of, of tribulations, the mm -hmm. power of tribulations. A lot of time when we come into Christ, mm -hmm. the, the misconception is that things get easier. Yeah. You know, any struggles, you know, everything's going to be fine. Wow. And that is truly a misconception. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what age um, you are. It doesn't matter where you are. You will go through tribulations. It doesn't matter whether you are in Christ or not. You will go through tribulations. But here is the beautiful part of going through tribulations when you actually have God in your life, when you're actually a devoted Christian or when you live that life in Christ is that you have peace, Come right? On. You go through those tribulations, having peace. Coming back to Paris has been such a, a roller coaster. Like I've gone through so much, right? <laughs> <laughs> but through it all, I have peace. Yeah. I have so much peace because I know that I am not alone. I know that this journey, I am, I'm walking with God. I know that he has a plan for my life. I know that it doesn't matter what I win. Yes. I win. Right. And that is the beauty of when we walk with God. Mm -hmm. He does not say that we won't go through tribulations. We will go through those tribulations, right? But every struggle, everything that we go through is there to teach us a lesson. Yeah. It helps you. Yeah. That is your training ground, right? Mm -hmm. For you to become wiser, for you to become better, Operation. for you to, to grow into that woman or man that God has intended for yeah. you to be in this earth, right? 
And here's the thing. I would not, I, I cannot, I'm, I'm so, I'm, uh, my lighting is bad, but that's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Glory yeah. Glory yeah. Spirit is here. It's moving. Keep going. Spirit is here. Oh, Listen, yeah. I would not be able to go and talk to my, my coaching clients, go on stages and, and have um, um, impactful um, conversation. Yes. I would not be able to be here on podcasts, speaking the way I'm speaking, if I didn't go through the mm -hmm. tribulations that I went through, right? Because the best way to learn a lesson is to go through it. It's to actually live it, right? And mm -hmm. because I've gone through those struggles, because I've lived those pains today, I could stand as a testimony that God never fails. Come on, come on. He never fails. And if I, if he did not put me through those situations, I would not be able to sit here and say, God never fails. Mm. I had, he had to put me in that situation and I had to see him show up Come on, so that I can stand today mm -hmm. and say, God is a God that never fails. When we look at um, the Bible, right? Yeah. We yeah. take the story of Joseph. Come on. Joseph went through so much oh, right yeah. imagine joseph having peace while being in prison come on imagine joseph having favor come on why yeah. being a slave why be in prison prison yes yes and that is the mercy of god that is the, that is the, the favor of god right yeah. yeah and so we have to be prepared when God leads us to a certain place, we have to be prepared to go through a certain amount of struggles, to go through certain tribulation because it's a part of it. Yes. And once you prepare yourself mentally, right, to go through those things, now you show up and you're ready. Prepared. Got you're prepared. Got everything you need. Because you know it's a part of the game. Exactly. Exactly. It's a part of it. You, In order for you to get to your yes, in order for you to get to that place of success, you got, in order for you to get to that promised land, you got to go to the desert. Yeah. Got to. You got to go to the desert. You got to. But there's, there's things that you're going to learn in that desert. You're going to go in wisdom, right? Mm -hmm. And you cannot give up. That's a fact. That's a you fact. cannot give up. That's you're going to be tempted in the desert, just like Jesus. You're going to go through all these things. And you cannot give up. You got to stand on the word of God because that is what we have. That's so true. That is our tool. Yes. That's our weapon. And I and I and even just hearing that because I, I know from just going through the experience myself, and I know other people will feel that same exact thing. And that's how you know you're a mindset coach. So if y'all need a mindset coach, see how she she got me motivated over here. So, but just even hearing that because we we sometimes we wonder and we people have those notions in their mind like, oh, I gave my life to Christ, everything gonna be peaches and cream, I ain't gotta go through nothing. But only way through relationship that you'll know that God is faithful is that you have to be in those rock in a hard place situations where you know like man i don't know if god gonna come through but then after you see him come through again and again and again and then that's why we can come on here and we're bold in our faith to be like yo i don't care what i go through because I man I, if you would know the things that god has brought me through in my past come on. where i am today you not even you'll be thinking you'll be thinking i should be shouting more or doing more than what i'm supposed to be doing and so just hearing the thing that you said just re re reiterating some of the things like you talked about the peace and, you know, God, the Bible tells us like God gives us peace, peace that passes all under, understanding uh -huh. and, and, and that that right there. And then another thing that you said about like, because I feel like once you have the peace, then now that means that you are reading the word, you are watching yourself with the word, you're praying to God. And from that, you know, it says renewing your mind every single day. So with those two things right there, when you get the peace of God, you can go through that same exact situation that you have been going through your entire life, whether that was abuse, um, addiction, um, just um, a poor injustice. mind, injustice, anything. But now because you have peace, you are in Christ, whether you a person that was far or a person that, hey, I just found Christ, 
Now you have a peace that the Holy Spirit is giving you that you like, man, okay, I know everything going to be all right. And then now your mind is renewed. So now you're thinking spiritually, you're thinking of things above and not things in this earthly realm. So just so many things that you said, and I, and I connect with that so much. And I feel like so many people will, and I know many people will, because when you, when you connect with God, you give your life to God, you understand like, you know what, this is a, a battle. We, we are soldiers for Christ. And as you talked about, we're in the body of Christ. So we have to go out and fight those spiritual battles. Like right now, we're, we're, we're it's people that's going to watch this that are non-believers or people who are believers. And we just got to encourage them to keep going, keep fighting. Or the person that's like, man, you know what? Hey, and Courtney talking about something. I want to try this out. I want to see what's going on. So just beautiful that you said that. And I want to transition into the, the um, inspire questions to, to inspire people to get closer to Christ. I want to hear from you, like, why did you give your life to Christ? And I know we kind of touched about on that with the first one, but I want to even go into a little bit deeper. Why did you give your life to Christ? You know, just going from a place of, hey, you know what? I wasn't, but now I was there. I remember you talking about that and seeing that church and going in that process. You know, for your perspective, why did you give your life to Christ? I gave my life to Christ because I came to the realization that there was nothing else <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that could compare to um, being in Christ. Come on. I've, I've done it all, Courtney. Mm. I, I have, listen, I've lived the worldly life, okay? Uh -huh. I know yeah. what it is. Yeah. I know what it is. That's a fact. And I could promise you that there's no better place than the than being in the presence of God. Come on. That love that, you know, that oftentimes we go searching for in the wrong places mm -hmm. because we've been hurt, because we've gone through, you know, um, different pains, because we've gone through abundantment, because we've gone through, you know, maybe even um, abuse, all different yeah. types of all abuse types because of we've gone through these things, right? Yeah, yeah. There's pain. There's there's um and and, and French we say the play is like there's um there's cuts. Yeah. There's pains now that you're carrying, right? Right. And I carried so much pain. I carried so much anger in regards to so many things that I had to go through. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. And I came to the realization that there was no nothing else that could give me the peace. Mm -hmm. that fill me up with that love different mm -hmm. than God. Wow. And and I heard you say this, you, you said this, and I, and I want to even take it a step further where you said that weight, that weight, because when, when you're, when you're not a believer of Christ and sometimes even when you are a believer of Christ, but you're not fully there, you haven't spiritually got to that level where you don't even have that worry because you're giving it to God and going on about your life. And, um, you know, as Christians, we have to run the race of life. And when you run the race of life, it's hard to run that race. If you got a big bag on your back with all this stuff on it, abuse and uh, addiction and and all of these things just that you carry, it's hard to run that race. But if you right. just take that stuff off and you say, God, can you take this? I, I give it to you. Let go and let God. And now that changes the whole perspective. So, and, and I, and I, we've all been there where we're just carrying on things and we're thinking about the things that we've done in the past. We have shame, we have guilt, but God, like, I already knew you was going to do that. But right. the beautiful thing about it is that you hear back with me. Like, and, and, and here's the thing is that a lot of times we feel like we've done too much. Mm -hmm. We feel like we've we've been too much in the world. We've done too much mm -hmm. for God to even consider us, right? Exactly. So we feel like we are too stained. I am too broken. I have done too much. God yeah. cannot use me. Come on. And that is why you really got to get into the word. Yes. Because when you get into the word, you discover that the people that God used were killers, Come on now. Let, look at Paul. Let's just take Paul. Okay? Yeah. Initially, who was Saul, who yeah. was killing Killing Christians. Christians. Killing him. Killing him. Who was killing, who had a, a, a vendetta against Christians. Who was killing Christians. Yeah. God yeah. just came 
and just turn his life around. Oh. And then he, he went on to, to convert. Mm -hmm. to convert so many Christians. He did the world, did a world tour, converting mm -hmm. people into Christians. If God could use Paul, why could he not use you? Come on, man. Come on. Come on. And 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 I think about that too, like. Cause I feel like the biggest thing for Christians, you like, man, am I, am I going to, I want to go to heaven. I don't want to go to hell. And I know like I, I took time to read through the Bible and understanding like all of these people that who are talking in the Bible, where they talking about these people, these people were not perfect. No. So that let me know we, you don't got to be perfect to go there. You got to believe we're saved by grace through faith. Right. You got to believe. Right. And, and then through the process of you believing, now that's the sanctification process. Now right. it's like, I believe that you are the head of my life. You are my Lord and Savior. Now, because I believe that, now I got to represent, represent that in my walk, in my right. since daily, right. in cl yeah, exactly. closed doors. When I'm in out in the community, I'm on my job, I'm in my marriage, my relationship, my parenthood. I have to now mirror that. Not fakely, not in a fake per per fake persona. No, I have to really walk this out because I can't say I just believe and then, yeah, I believe, and then now I'm not following anything that come behind right. it. So no, I, I I agree with that one thousand percent. It has to be walked out. Right. And, and let's take um David, right? Oh man. David, who initially was, you know, I mean, God said, you know, man after my own heart. What happened to David? He mm -hmm. fallen, he fell into sin. Come on. He actually murdered, um, you know, he went into adultery, murdered a man for murdered, his wife. Murdered, and that was right? sad. Come on, man. And God condemned him for that. Yes. He faced the consequences of his sins, right? But mm -hmm. what happened after? Come on. He repented. Mm -hmm. Got up. Mm-hmm straight Come so on. now this is a this is a word for those who feel who feel like they've backslidden and mm -hmm. they can't come back come to on. Christ, come on right? come on let's talk about the prodigal son come on who left who left left gone and when he came back his father was like let me let me put this robe over you because you are king give me a ring let me let set me, you up let me dress you up yeah let, yeah let me show you let me remind you Royalty. of who you are yeah yeah that you are king in this place yeah. so on. sometimes we need a reminder courtney yes we need a reminder of who we are of yeah. what is what is your identity Come on. Who did God create, to, to create you to be? Did he not say that you are the salt of this earth? Come on. Did he no. not say that you are a light in this world? Yeah. So yeah. why are you walking around like you don't have no power? Come on. Come on. Why are you walking around like you don't have dominion? Yeah. Why are you walking around like you don't even, you can't control your thoughts? Come on. Like when you are tempted to sin, why are you acting like you don't have no control over that? Come on. Right? Yeah. So we now have to come into this position of knowing who we are. Yes. Knowing yes. that you, the words that you're going to speak, because we remember the Bible tells us that power and life and death resides in the power of our tongue. Yes. So what are you declaring over your life? Are you saying, oh, I can't get through this? Or are you saying I'm going to get through this by the grace of God? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Changing the language, changing the Are language. Are you saying that with the power of God, with the strength, with His strength, I will get through this? How Come are on. you speaking? Come on. Come on. You got to. So it, all, it all comes down to us. It really comes down to the, the, the word is there. Now, do you believe in it? Come on. Yes. Is your faith strong enough that you believe the word of God? Come on. And that is really what I want to say. Yeah. My message is believe God. You ain't even got to believe me. I am just a vessel. I'm a tool. God mm. is using. He's going to use me because I, I said yes. Exactly. But now you got to believe God. I'm not asking you to believe me. Believe God. Go into the word and see what he says about you. Yes. Change your mind. It will blow your mind. And I... I've talked about that in a, a few of my books about, you know, just finding your purpose. And it's so important for people to do that because 
if you go, like you said, when living in the world, I, look, I had gave my life to God when I was younger, but I go to college, I'm 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 out in the world. But those things after a while, you're like, man, it's not even fulfilling me. Like, why am why do I feel this way after I feel like I do something good, but I feel bad after? I have some guilt, some shame for what I've done. And I had to go through that repent process. And then you go through that, that cycle over and over again until you like, you know, I'm tired of this. I don't want this life. And it's like that right there is just the process of God showing you like, no, I have a purpose for you. I have a purpose and a destiny, a divine life for you. It's up to right. you to choose it. Like you said, it's choice. God going to give us free choice. It's up to you. It's here. You you research everything else that you want to figure out. If you want to go, and it, it sometimes it, it bothers me when I talk to people and they say that, well, where about this? What about? I'm like, pick up the Bible and read it. Research it. Pull in the Google, internet. Go on there and sit. If you read something you don't understand, find it. It's people out here on YouTube, everywhere, talking about the Bible. And I say that because people put so much effort in other things. If you're going to go on a vacation trip, you're going to look up all the hotels. You're going to look up all the food places. You're going to say, oh, this is a this is a tour that we should go on. So do the same thing <laughs> if you was going to look up that, that Bible. Put that same energy towards spiritual. You're going to get so much back. Listen, Courtney. Listen. So many people would make it uh, a routine or even an obligation to mm -hmm. get up at 5 o'clock and hit the gym. Come on. And, and which is great. Right, because mm -hmm. you got to take care of your physical, because yes. your body, your temple, temple, and you got to take care of that, right? Yes. But you would get up and have that routine. You won't miss a gym session. Come on. But you won't dedicate that same type of energy towards praying. Come on, come on. You won't dedicate that same type of energy towards spending time with God. Come on. You won't even dedicate that type of energy. I'm going to church at least one day in a week. Come on. You understand what I mean? And, and a lot of times, people are doing everything that society says that you need to do. They're getting fit. They're buying houses, buying nice cars, have great jobs, mm -hmm. and then they're still unhappy. Still unhappy. And then they, they, they're depressed. Come on. And then they're living, you know, mentally they're mentally miserable. Exactly. And they're putting on this front because we do live in this social media world, right? So they're putting on this front in social media, making everything seem so, so happy, joyful. Good, everything. <laughs> on the inside. Come on. When the cameras are cut. Come on. They're miserable. Big time. They want to know why? Come on. Because that spiritual life is lacking. It's lacking. It's like you need that spiritual life because we are not only flesh, but we're also spirit. Spiritual beings, yes. So what happens, Courtney, when you don't feed something? It, it's it's going to die. <laughs> it's going to be weak. It's going to die. <laughs> well, it's going to be weak. It, weak. it is going to die. Yeah. So as long as you don't feed your spirit, mm -hmm. your spirit dies. Come on. But remember, your spirit is a part of you. Mm -hmm. So if you are not feeding a part of you, you are dying. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That spiritual part of you is dying. And, mm -hmm. and that is why you're unhappy. That is why you have all these things going for you, but you're still unhappy. Mm. You're still depressed. Mm. You're still dealing with suicidal thoughts. Come on. You're going out every night partying mm -hmm. because that is that is the, the, the how the enemy, you know, makes you forget the misery that you live in. Mm -hmm. And you feel like this is the life. That is not the life. It's not. It's not. Feed your spirit. Feed it. Feed it. Feed your spirit. Come on. You got and, and like you said with the analogy, like our physical man, our temple, you taking care of that 5 a.m. and you getting stronger. You getting it, you seeing it, that same excitement, that same discipline that you put with that and doing that with your spirit, man, you're going to be even stronger. 
Listen. It's going to be even more disciplined. You think you're disciplined in your own strength. You're like, oh, I'm get up at five. I'm getting my workout in, self-control. I'm eating my meal prep. And I'm I'm like one of those people, like, I'm going to get up in the morning and make sure I get that workout. But I also know, and I always share with people, like, when I'm getting up early in the morning, I got that phone. I got that Bible app, and it's playing while I'm driving to the gym, while I'm coming back from the gym, maybe while I'm walking, getting getting prepared to start a full workout, because I need that word. I need to hear from God, not only through my prayer, but I need to hear what your word is telling me to do today. And there's something about God. When you, when you are connected and have a relationship with God, and you read his word, I don't care if you just oh, took it and said, I'm reading this page, he going to speak to you. He's going to speak to you and tell you what it is that he wants you to do. And so it's so important, as A is saying, to ensure that you are building up your spiritual man. And so one of the other questions I, I, I want to ask you is um, in regards to like we talked about, you know, you giving your life to Christ and how Christ has inspired you. I want to know what's your favorite Bible verse? Um, like what's what's something that you feel like, man, this 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 the one I go to, this the one I like. Which one is that one for you? Because you have been sharing so much inspiration, man. Look, like I said, you got me over here. I'm I'm ready to go. I'm telling you, if y'all need to be, y'all looking for a coach, this is the coach. Look no further. I'm telling you right here. So what about for you? What's your favorite Bible verse and why? Um, One of my favorite Bible verses that I always go back to, and, and I have several, right? But this yeah. is one that I really, I, that I connected with from um from the beginning of my journey and that is in in psalm one i believe it's verse three and mm -hmm. it says uh, i'm like a tree planted by the riverside you know my my, my leaves will not wither that everything that i do will prosper you know yeah. And, and yeah and that is really um this is something that i, I declare over my life um almost daily mm -hmm. almost daily and another um another verse also that you know that I really hold on to and that is for me like really like the base of all of this is that all things happen for the good for the good of those that that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Yeah. And it really um, puts everything into perspective. Why? Because it lets you know that even that um that job that you didn't get, mm -hmm. that was for your good. Come on. That that relationship that didn't work out. That person that denied you, that rejected you, yes, that was for your good. Come on. Um, that 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 you know, um, friendship that that just this um you know just broke up, just stopped. Yeah, that was for your good. Come on, come on. That thing that didn't work out, yes, that was for your good. Amen. And that has been like the testimony of my life. Honestly, like just seeing things not working out and later on seeing how God, you know, that was strategically done by God because he had something way more better, you know, in store for me. And, and you really have to walk in that knowing, walk in that faith that God, he, he, he has no, it's not beneficial for him to lead us astray. It's not beneficial for him, for, for us to be in, in, in struggle or for us to, you know, live um, lives that do not represent that that are, that doesn't give his that doesn't give glory. him glory. Glory, exactly. It's yes. not beneficial for him. Mm -hmm. So he wants what is best for us. Yes. But we have to believe that. Correct. A lot of times, the reasons that we do not get, we do not um, connect to, or at least attain the things that God has in store for us, because it's, it's because of our faith. Yeah, it's because we yeah. lack faith because we don't even believe mm -hmm. that we that we um that we deserve these things. Come on. So we live in this poverty mindset, believing hey. that you know I'm just gonna settle for for the less. I'm just gonna settle for Medio you know, what yep. For, yep. for mediocrity. Yeah. Come on. Whereas the God that we serve is a God of the impossible. Come on, man. Come the on. God that we serve is a God of kings and queens of, of, of glory. Come on. So at some point, we got to stop limiting God. Yeah. We have to stop putting God in a box, right? On, and feeling like he can't do it. Yes. And then we wonder, oh, why this thing ain't walking off? You, you, your faith, boo. It's mm -hmm. because of your faith. It's because you speak in it, but you don't even believe it. 
Mm. Mm. You're not even fully believing. You're not even really taking it in to realize. And and we all do it, you know, like and, and sometimes it's compartment <laughs> compartmentalized where maybe in your 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 relationship, you believe God to do all things. And at work, you're like, ah, I can't go for that position. I don't have all the credentials. Um, I can't get that house because I don't really have the credit for that. But God, like, I'm I'm at every part of your life. I want to know yes. every part, every single segment of your yes. life. I'm there. Courtney, my life don't make sense. Mm -hmm. My life mm -hmm. does not make sense. Come on. I walk into teams. There's teams that, that I have attained mm -hmm. that... I did not qualify for. Come I did on. not have. <laughs> Listen, oh. I like don't stand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, but, <laughs> but I believe in God, so that means that sometimes I'm gonna go, even though I know I don't have <laughs> what, what is required. <laughs> but I said, God, listen, uh -huh. God, if, if you if you in it with me, I, I, I got. I I'm see. there, and that, that you goes. Said, you said all I need is a muscle seed of fit. I got the fit. I got it. I got, I got, I got it. a whole bucket. So listen. <laughs> so listen. If if you in it, I'm in it. I'm in it. I'm in I it. I promise you, Courtney. Yes. And I and, and two things from that. It don't I, make sense. I agree with you one thousand percent. I heard this before. I talked about this in one of my books. Is that God takes the unqualified to make them qualified, and the reason why He does that is to bring glory to His name. So then. He, you know, I know the people who he taken as unqualified and we put, he places you in that position to do something. Now you have no reason to not give God his glory. When someone brings that microphone to you and they say, Hey, hey, uh, how, how did you sell all you those? Better testify. Come on. Hey, how much time you got? Cause I got something to tell you. I got a testimony to share with y'all and that's going to bring more people to God. So when I heard you say that, that's the first thing I think about. God want to get his glory. He going to take the unqualified, make him qualified. And the other thing is, I know we got only a couple more minutes. The other thing is that the part that you said, you said the qualified was something that was helping me, Holy Spirit. You said something. Oh, what was it? Qualified to unqualified. Oh, you said, if God not going, I'm not going. And that's another one of my favorite Bible verses. It says, it said, it's God, if God is for us, who can be against us? Against us. Come on. So I'm like, yo, if I'm going into this, I'm like, I I'm like, God, if this is in your will. I'm going after it. And if you let's there, go. With me, let's go. Come on. If let's you go. there, mm -hmm. let's go. And and um and just because I know we don't have a lot of time, but just to finish up um on on the testimony, right? Mm -hmm. Your what you've gone through, what God has brought you to, it got to serve a purpose. Yes. Every time you remain quiet mm -hmm. and you don't share that testimony, Come on. the devil wins. Yes. Every time, Every time you choose to stay quiet while you know that God just take you through. Mm -hmm. He just brought you through something mm -hmm. that was incredible, that was miraculous. Come on. And you don't speak about that, the devil wins. Come on. Because testimonies is how we build our faith. Yes. It's how we how we help other people build their faith as well. Come on. If I was, if, if God didn't put me through what I went to, if I didn't have these testimonies, pan testimonies, pan testimonies, what what am I here for? Come on. What am I speaking for? What 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 what's the sense of even using me? What's the sense of even giving me a platform? What's the sense of even me being here? Come on. Right? Come on. So you got to speak. You got to open up your mouth and talk about what God has done for you. Got to. You have to. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. You have to. That's so beautiful. And and I and I and I I I want to I want to wrap it in and say one I think I I thank God for allowing us to connect like 2 3 years ago and now full circle moment we're back here coming together to to sharpen each other in this conversation, but also sharpen the other people in the world who are followers of people who are going to come to Christ. We're speaking that into existence. And I just thank you for that. I thank God for that. Um, and then also I thank you for your time and us being able to come together, have this conversation. And to the people who have been listening, I'm telling you right now, one thing that I will say is this, like you have to make that decision to make the choices that are aligned with God. And when you do that, Christ will blow your mind. 
So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll leave you guys with that. Make sure that you like, subscribe, share. You never know who needs this inspiration. If you guys are looking for a mindset coach, I said it a few times. She ain't telling me to say this. I'm telling you. Look, she in Paris, but just like how I'm in South Carolina right now, it's virtual everywhere. Reach out to her. Find her on Instagram, Facebook. She's doing her thing, like I said, in Paris, and um, just going to be doing so many more great things. And I'm looking forward to what God has in store for you. And um, I thank you again for coming on the pod. To everybody else, make sure that you share with somebody. This is a beautiful conversation, part two at that. So if you haven't watched If you watch, finish watching this one, you've been inspired, go back and watch part one. I'm telling you right now, it's going to be a blessing for you. So thank you again, Aya. Thank you, everybody else, for tuning in. And um, have a good one. I appreciate y'all. All right, peace.